What's up, dogs? This is a Vietnamese coffee fin. It's a filter with a couple of pieces here, and together they make for a small drip filter. I like coffee, you like coffee, but how the f heck does this relate to sourcing new clients? Well, once upon a time, Finn Coffee Club followed me on Instagram. Coffee is one of the themes on my grid, and most of my work is shooting for coffee companies. Naturally, I took a peek at their profile to see if they might be in need of some photography assistance. Over the past couple weeks, I've gotten a few questions about how I find companies to shoot for and how I contact them, so I thought this would be a great example. This video isn't sponsored by Finn Coffee Club, but to be clear, they did gift me this Finn filter and a bag of coffee for a gifted post on Instagram. In fact, I'm not even working with them as a client, but walking through our interactions and my thought process here might be helpful for anyone looking to start getting into paid shooting who is unsure about how to contact the company. Before the tips, and for you noobs here, my name is Dan Yashua, I'm a creative entrepreneur, and I'd like to help you learn, make, and monetize your photography and creative projects, because that's how I spend my time. Please join me by simply subscribing. And we're currently renting the new RF Nifty 50 here at Dan Yashua HQ, so we're going to throw this on the camera now so that we have some test footage to look at in a future video. Let's try something. If you were taking notes earlier, Finn Coffee Club followed me, not the other way around. I tell you, it is hard being so popular. I have a tiny account of less than 500 followers, so anytime that happens, when a company finds me, I take the time to check them out and see what they're up to, and to judge whether they may need some social or photo assistance. But the main takeaway here is that you want to maintain your own feed, you want to keep active and interact with companies in the same area of focus that you're in. I posted 176 times in 2020, or just about every other day, and that's a lot of work for something that isn't directly monetizable. The nice thing is that Instagram acts as top of the funnel as a way to connect to other photographers, other companies, or just to get other people to potentially take a look at your link tree. Even though it's a lot of work, think of your feed as both your portfolio, or at least a large part of it, and a function of how you market yourself. It's not the easiest thing to make time for, but it is super important, and it helps to know a little bit about hashtag strategy which if that interests you, hold on to that thought. That's something I'll be covering in a video very shortly. For each one of the photo gigs that I've done, the client has directly mentioned my Instagram feed. So it's a good sign that it's working the way I want it to be. Identify a target client. All right, next one's a little bit tricky, especially if you haven't done any paid client work yet. But don't get discouraged by that yet because this is an exercise that you probably should be doing before you reach out to anybody if possible. And it's iterative, like just about everything else in solopreneuring. Solo entrepreneuring, solopreneuring. So when you were a solo, when you were a single entrepreneur. So you'll tweak your ideal client persona over time. No sweat if you don't nail it first shot. For me, I'm looking to work with small companies, preferably ones that are growing and with founders or core teams that already appreciate value in social media, but that might not have the expertise to do it themselves. On my Indie Hackers profile, I sum it up like this. I help businesses create content. My ideal customers want to grow their media presence online but don't have the expertise, bandwidth to do it all themselves. They're small, growing, eager, humble, and collaborative. Honestly, I need to make that even more specific, but Finn Coffee Club seemed to fit that description based on what I could tell. They were posting often, they were using tags, they had higher quality shots. They kind of looked all set on the Instagram front. But again, because they reached out to me, I thought there was value in kind of double checking and reaching out. One scenario for companies of their size is that potentially the founder was doing all the social work and they either didn't like it or it was taking uh, too much time away from core business activities. You never really know what's going on behind the scenes. And so that's why I think you don't have a lot to lose by just connecting with these companies. As it turned out, they did have somebody working on socials and that made sense to me given kind of my gut reaction um, based on the frequency and quality of their postings. They didn't have a need for additional work at the moment, but I think it was important to make that connection. And for a tiny creator, um, it's still nice to get a gifted post. Tip three is go local. No matter where you live, you probably know of a few companies that are struggling to stand up their online or social presence, especially given the pandemic and kind of the frantic rush to get online for companies that weren't before. Um, this is a good time to evaluate companies' needs and reach out. As a bare minimum start, just comment on their posts and interact with them so that they start to recognize you as a social handle. Local companies provide you a chance to speak with the business owners directly. If you'll feel more comfortable doing that, 
as opposed to sliding into the DMs or crafting an email introduction. For companies that you'll only be able to contact through text, you can show up to a shop that you frequent and not even have to feel like you necessarily need to jump right into a sales pitch for your photography work. The reality is that you're going to rack up a lot of no thank yous as you begin to speak with potential clients. It's going to feel like you are the king or queen of no thank yous and non-responses as you start to reach out to companies. And I want to be very clear I am no expert and am still very much raking those in myself. When you do get a local win though, it has the potential to help you tack on other gigs. Local businesses are usually a tight-knit group, or at the very least, they know each other. So getting in with one company might lead to follow-up work with the others that they collaborate with. If this was at all helpful, my friends and I talk about sourcing clients in the second episode of our podcast. It might give you a better idea of how we do that as we continue to build our entrepreneurial projects in public.